Hi, welcome to the Total Joint Replacement class. Um, my name is Abby Miyamoto. I am the orthopedic charge nurse. I work with Dr. Lowry, Dr. Lim, and Dr. Holtzman. So today's session, we're going to talk about enhanced recovery and what it means, how to prepare yourself for surgery, and what to expect uh, during recovery while you're at home. If you have any questions, you are scheduled for a telephone appointment or a video visit with me, and we will go over any questions you may have. Kaiser Permanente, we now have an enhanced recovery program to help you prepare safely and help you heal more quickly. It includes proven ways to control pain. That means it's multimodal. Um, we're going to give you a mixture of medications, which we will give you instructions on how to take them properly and what the right combination will work for you. Um, we will help you move and we would like for you to eat sooner right after surgery. Enhanced recovery also includes preventing infections. Um, you will be receiving instructions about mouth and skin care before surgery, and we'll teach you how to use the incentive spirometer to exercise your lungs to help prevent pneumonia. And studies throughout the world show that enhanced recovery programs have helped patients with recovering more quickly, uh, feeling more comfortable after surgery, and spending less time in the hospital. Uh, patient leave the hospital in a better shape and that enhanced recovery has helped them feel better. Um, you will be given a, um, a calendar, an enhanced recovery calendar. It's, it's basically a brochure that is a, uh, a shorter version of the booklet that's included with uh, your prep for surgery. Um, it's either mailed or handed out to you by the surgery scheduler. So the most important role for you as a patient is identifying your caregiver. Your caregiver needs to be by your side during the night, especially uh, at least four to five days. Um, it helps keep you safe, especially at nighttime. You will need them to help you with the walker, getting up out of bed to go to the bathroom, keeping track of your medications and also helping you with elevating your leg on the pillows and applying ice to your surgical site. If you are exercising or meditating, continue to do so because that'll help you recover faster. You have the enhanced recovery brochure that's again a short version of the booklet and you could just post it somewhere where it's visible so it could guide you during your recovery. Participating during rehab, the home health physical therapist will be by at your house the next day after you've been discharged to go through some of the exercises that was reviewed with you post-surgery and making sure that you are be Continuing to be mobile and active after surgery is important for your new joint. Being your healthiest before and after surgery will help prevent infection and healing. If you're a smoker, we do have a smoking cessation counselor that can work with you one on one. Continue to be active. The stronger you are going into surgery, the better off you are during rehab. Staying healthy during this COVID time, make sure you wash your hands, wear masks when out in public. If you have any cuts or scrapes that may look infectious, infected, sorry, uh, please email us or call us directly and we can um, assess the wound for you. There is an available guided meditation on kp.org. You can use it to help you relax and of course, you can use it before surgery, during surgery, after surgery um, to promote healing and relaxation. If you are diabetic, it is very important for you to have good blood control of your sugar. Um, it is very important with healing and uh, preventing infection. If your blood sugar is out of whack, please make sure you contact your primary to let them know so they can uh, titrate your medications if you have to prior to your surgery. And also notifying your primary 
regarding your upcoming surgery can also help them determine whether they need to adjust your medications or not. So preventing infections includes brushing and flossing your teeth two to three times a day and the use of the incentive spirometer to help exercise your lungs. It is very important for you to place the spirometer where it's easier for you to reach and it will remind you to use the incentive spirometer at least four to five times a day. You can get used to them now by practicing so you remember how to use them um, or if you are not sure how to use them the pre-op nurses will go over it with you and also at the recovery room they can guide you on how to use the incentive spirometer. So preparing your skin prior to surgery is very important. You'll be given two packages with two wipes each. It's a chlorhexidine wipes. What you do is, as the diagram shows, each wipe represents which body part you're supposed to use the wipes for. So before, before bedtime, after you take a shower, you use the wipe on the designated body parts. Once you've been wiped down, you can put your clothes back on and go to sleep, but you cannot take a shower after that. The longer the chlorhexidine is on your skin, the better it's preventing uh, you from contracting any infection during surgery. In the hospital, you experience enhanced recovery approaches to help you heal more quickly and reduce the chance of infection. What can you expect? So to control your pain, they will be using a mixture of pain meds that are less like to, likely to make you confused, sleepy, and constipated, which then, of course, it makes it easier for you to move and eat soon after surgery. Moving sooner, one of the most important things you can do to start healing is to move sooner. Uh, moving is good for your new joint, your digestion, and your strength. Eating and drinking. Eating and drinking soon after helps your body prepare for surgery and gives you energy to heal. You are given a carb drink that's part of the kit that's mailed to you. You are to drink that clear liquid or carb drink two hours before your arrival at the hospital. So planning your home recovery Make sure you identify who your caregiver will be, that they are aware that they need to be at the same place where you are going to be recovering, preparing your room and your house to make sure it's clear of clutter and having the right transportation. So going home, 90% of you will be discharged the same day of your surgery. So in the recovery room, Again, the physical therapist will be notified once you are able to safely get up on your feet. Once you are able to move, the physical therapist will assess if you are safe to go home. If you have steps at home, we do have these stairs that lead to nowhere that you can practice on. Now, if you happen to have both knees done, or you're gonna have a revision, you will be discharged the next day. So before 10 a.m. the morning after surgery, the physical therapist will again make the rounds at eight, usually after breakfast, and they will do the assessment once more to see if it is safe for you to go home. Because of enhanced recovery, patients feel better and are ready to go home soon after surgery. It sounds unbelievable, but we have had multiple patients that have gone home right after surgery and felt a lot better being home than staying in a hospital. So if you are unable to participate with the physical therapist or you have other issues that does not deem you safe to go home, you will be kept overnight. So rest assured that we're just not gonna send you home just because that was the plan. We will make sure that you are safe to go home prior to you being discharged. So again, 
by now, or at least a week before your surgery, you should have your transportation. If you need to um, hire or get a ride, please make sure that's already put in place and identifying your caregiver. We would like for you to be home because it's easier to move around for rehab since you know the lay of the land. It's easy to stay healthy. As you know, the COVID is going around and flu season is going to start. So we don't want you to be exposed to too many sick people. So for caregivers, it says here to plan to have help for two weeks. Two weeks may be a lot for a lot of patients, family or sons or daughters, nieces, nephews or any f or friends to take off. But if you can do at least three to four days and be with uh, your loved ones consistently 24 seven for three to four days, that's more ideal than having you off for the next two weeks, right? So make, you know, you're mostly there to help run errands, driving your loved ones to and from their appointments. If they need to come in to see one of the surgeons or myself because of a questions that you may have or that we want you to come in, then you have that person to drive you. Having a caregiver is very helpful to have, especially with keeping track of your medications. It's difficult to keep track of your own medications if you are the ones taking the narcotics. Also with icing, it's hard for you to get up and off the bed to go and grab the new ice packs or in, in your case as a knee surgery, it's difficult to unplug the sleeve from the machine so you could go up to the bathroom and replace the ice or to replace the ice, the frozen ice water bottle in the machine and also to elevate your leg. Um, it's difficult to lift up your leg right after surgery. Um, also helping you with your mobility and daily activities. In the beginning, it's going to be a little bit more challenging because of course you just had surgery. So it's important to have somebody there to assist you with your uh, movements. To make sure your home is ready, make sure that the pathways are clear of any clutter. Uh, make sure that if there is a loose rugs that you may trip on, just fold it away and you can put it back once you don't need to use the walker anymore. And of course, not everybody's house has a wide enough um, hallway to fit the walker in. So making sure that you are able to navigate to the bedroom, to wherever you want to go with the walker without having to use the walls and having to carry the walker to your desired destination. If you have a two story home um, and everything is downstairs uh, and you prefer to have your recovery area on the first floor, you can do that. And if you would like to rent a hospital bed, the patient care coordinator or otherwise known as the discharge planner can um, order the bed for you at a cost. It depends on what is covered, what insurance, what your insurance covers. Make sure you have good lighting between your bed and the bathroom. Um, making sure that if you are buying new equipments that they are assembled beforehand. Grab bars in the shower. We don't recommend suction cups. Um, those suction cups are a little bit not a little bit, but very dangerous since we don't know how reliable the suctions are and we don't want you to reach over and use that grab bar and the suction cup loses its suction and you fall and you break the other side and you get to see us again. So if you don't get a chance or if you don't even want to put a permanent grab bars, don't worry about it. The physical therapist who will be coming to your house can guide you on how to safely go in and out of the tub without the use of a grab bars. If you don't have a walker, the patient care coordinator will let you know whether it is also covered by your insurance. And if you would like to rent at a cost, they can let you know how much you get to pay for renting the walker from um, Apria. So for the next few slides, we're going to talk about symptom management, what to do with your pain, 
nausea, constipation, swelling, what to do with the incision, and going home with a nerve block, what to do and what to look out for. So when you are discharged, it is very common for your pain to increase. Again, in the hospital, before you were discharged, you have the nurses and the doctors, anesthesiologists to look, look out for you and you know, keep, continue to ask you about your pain. At home, it's you and your caregiver. Your caregiver is not um, trained to make sure that you are comfortable. They are not sure how to navigate this after care surgery so it is up to you to notify your caregiver that you are in pain and you need medications so taking your medications on time doesn't mean you have to have a set time what it means is staying ahead of the pain is to take it before your pain becomes too severe you don't want to take any pain medication, regardless of what it is, when your pain is out of control, because then it'll take us a lot longer to get you comfortable um, if your pain is at 10 out of 10 or even 20 out of 10, than to have you take your pain medication at around four or five out of 10, depending on what your comfort zone is. Not everybody is the same, so try not to compare yourself with Sue or Ann or Bob on how they're taking their pain medication and how their, re their rehab is going. You are an individual, so your pain management is always going to be different than everybody else. So exercising at least three times a day. So the first three days, we'd want you to take it easy. So that means try not to be up on your feet for more than 30 minutes at a time, not in the 24 hours, just at a time. We want that leg elevated, resting, and we want ice applied to it. The reason that is, is the more you are up on your feet, the more swelling you will have. The more swelling you will have, the more pain you will have. So having it elevated decreases the pain and the swelling. So moving your joint, there are exercises that you can do in bed that doesn't require you to get up on your feet and do the exercises. And even if you are getting up on your feet to do some of the exercises, it shouldn't take you more than five, 10 minutes the first few days, right? So again, during your recovery, it is important for you to have rest and make to help you recuperate and it heals faster, as opposed to trying to do everything all at once and expecting to be bouncing back right after surgery. So at home, your role in enhanced recovery continues. So controlling pain, again, as I have mentioned earlier, make sure you take your medication and staying ahead of the pain. Now, after saying that, you know, you don't have to take it um, exactly on the dot. Just make sure that you are taking and consistent with pain medication as to po opposed to just kind of taking it here and there. Taking it here and there is the same thing as waiting for your pain to get too severe. Okay, so you are going to be given multiple medications and these multiple medications are compatible. So you don't have to worry about whether it's okay to take this with that. Um, again, with the ice and the elevating and the movement, you should be doing some exercises in bed or even for uh, small increments during the first three to four days. We want that swelling controlled by elevating it and um, using the ice machine. Eating healthy. Stay hydrated. Eat healthy foods such as high protein foods fruits and vegetables these all help with healing try to avoid sweets fats and alcohol since they do delay healing and also with um, infections so for incision care 
um, you will have internal sutures that are dissolvable. These sutures you will not see. Um, for a knee patient, your incision will be closed with staples. For hip patients, uh, anterior or posterior, they will seal the incision with a surgical glue. Now, if it's a revision of the hip, they will use staples in, instead of a surgical glue. So the incision wound, when you go home, it'll be covered with a waterproof dressing. So for the hip patient, it's a waterproof dressing. It's like grayish black in color, and that's intended to be that color. Um, and for your knee, the waterproof dressing is wrapped with an ACE wrap, and that stays on for seven days. So it's okay for you to shower on the fourth day with the waterproof dressing. It's not gonna get wet since it is waterproof, um, but you are not allowed to have tub bath or submerge it in water such as pool or hot tubs. Now on the seventh day, you may remove the surgical dressing, the waterproof dressing. And if you note that the incision is dry, you don't need to cover it. Now, if you notice any type of drainage from the incis incision site, please notify your surgeon or myself. Now, if you notice, notice just a little drop, that's okay. What I'm talking about is you have to continuously change the dressing or it's draining from different sites. Then that's when you have to contact us. For patients with staples, you your staples are typically removed by the home health physical therapists who are going to be visiting you at your house. It comes off in 10 to 14 days. And once they remove the staples, they will be applying steri strips that to just cover the incision. It shouldn't be to keep, hold the incision together. And these, uh, these steri strips will fall off on their own. And you may take a shower with the steri strips on. You don't have to worry about making sure it's dry. You still cannot submerge it in water, meaning your incision site. No hot tub, no pool, um, because we don't want it opening. It has to be completely healed prior to you um, submerging in water. So bruising and swelling is very common. Bruising is very common after surgery and it can be impressive. Impressive is not really the word I would use. I would say it looks kind of scary because it will change colors and the bruising will travel wherever your, uh, whatever your leg is in, posi in any position. So if your leg is down, the bruising, the discoloration will move at its lowest body part. So if you elevate your leg, it may migrate all the way to the back of your thigh if you had the knee surgery or your bottom. And when you put your leg down, it may migrate all the way to your foot, your calf, or your ankles. So don't worry about that. Those will disappear. It'll just be absorbed by your body um, in its own time. Again, there's no timeline for them because everybody, again, is different. The swelling. Swelling is part of healing. Uh, so they last up to three to six months. So that doesn't mean for three months or six months you will have this giant leg. It means that for the first few weeks, you will have a consistently swollen leg, and that's common. What we want to avoid is the very swollen leg that you can tell that the incision is tight and it's pulling. We don't want that because then that'll that's giving too much tension at the incision site and it slows down the healing. That's why we would like for you to elevate and ice your leg. So in the three month mark, typically patients will feel a lot better by then. So they move more, they, they do stuff more, and they're always up on their feet. They'd forget about icing or elevating. That's when the swelling will rear its ugly head once more and you're wondering what you did. So it's just your body's way of telling you to slow down, elevate your leg and ice. Now, if that swelling does not go away even with the elevation or the application of ice. 
do let us know, call your surgeon or call the clinic. So at the recovery room, the recovery room nurse will apply the ice machine onto your knee. They will demonstrate on how to use this machine. It is for you to keep. And if you are concerned about how to apply it at home, there is a reference or a, a quick guideline on how to properly use the ice machine on top of the lid. It's, it has pictures and descriptions that's easy to follow. But the hose is attached to the sleeves, which is wrapped around your knee with a Velcro. So before your surgery, please make sure to buy eight of the 16 ounce water bottle and freeze them. So when you go home, you may fill the Iceman with the frozen water bottle as opposed to making sure that you always have ice cubes available to replace. So once the frozen water bottle has melted, then you can replace it with the new frozen water bottle. So it goes on and on and on. If the machine breaks for some reason, you need to call the company that the phone number is right on the lid as well and let them know and they will provide you with the replacements. Our clinic or the recovery room does not have any replacements for any of the parts. Um, we will refer you to them so you might as well just give them a call because we don't have anything on hand. So the nerve block. So for nerve blocks, um, this is to numb the front of your knee for surgery. So even with this nerve block infusing into under your skin, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be taking any oral pain medications that you're going to rely on with this uh, from this nerve block. It just helps alleviate the pain on top of the oral meds. Now, oral medications may not be needed or you may not need the stronger medications. It is up to every individual. So the nerve block lasts about two to three days, so about 48 to 72 hours, sometimes longer. So the rate is at eight mLs an hour, and the balloon inside this um, nerve block is hard to tell. And it, well, it's clear and it's difficult to determine whether it's infusing or not because the container is clear, the balloon with the fluid is clear, so it's hard to see if the balloon is decreasing. So there's a balloon in this container that pushes the medication to your knees. Um, it, it goes through a tubing that's inserted under your knee. The anesthesiologist will use an ultrasound to guide the needle, then remove the needle and tape it on to your to your leg with a clear dressing. So if you see any clear or pink fluid leaking around the catheter, that's normal. It just means sometimes there's some backflow from the insertion site. So you may just wrap it with a towel to catch the uh, leaking. Or if you want to just, if you have any dressing at home, you could just put it um, onto wherever it's leaking from and just tape it in place. And the physical therapist who will be visiting you can help you um, secure the dressing if it is indeed leaking from the dressing. Now, if you notice that the nerve block doesn't seem to be helping you with your pain relief, please don't remove it until you have spoken to one of us or the anesthesiologist on call, because once that nerve block has been removed, you may not have it back. It's a one-time deal. And the anesthesiologist is very good about guiding you on what to do. And of course, on the weekends, still call the anesthesiologist on call. Please do not call the advice nurse. The first go-to is the anesthesiologist. So you are a pa you are the patient and you are required to remove the catheter yourself. Now, remember, the catheter is not actually in any vein or in any arteries, so it's just right under your skin, and it's secured with a clear tape. And that clear tape 
under that clear tape there's no stitches there's no staples that's uh, securing your catheter onto your leg it's just basically taped on you just have to remove the tape and gently pull the catheter out and cover it with a band-aid now if that's too intimidating for you to do by yourself or your caregiver we will have the home health physical therapist help you with that now in some uh, areas so let's uh, Santa Clara Santa Rosa up in Sacramento I think uh, they the physical therapist does not remove the catheter so if you are leery about removing it yourself please contact your surgeon and then they will um, order for a nurse to come out to remove the catheter for you so again for any nerve block issues for any concerns or any questions about it if we are closed please call the anesthesiologist on call so if they're on call that means they're av available 24 7 even on the holidays and leave them a message and they will call you back now if it's the weekday and it's office hours or 8 30 to 5 you can call me and i will help you uh, navigate what you're supposed to do with this leaking or non-functioning nerve block so to elevate your legs as you see in these three pictures um, with the use of the footstool or the recliner that is not what we considered as elevating that's just me putting my feet up after a hard days at work or chasing my children around at the playground or chasing my dog across the park so if you have to lean back to get the recliner to elevate your leg that's not ideal unless of course your intent is to just re uh, relax on the recliner and have your feet up that's okay and the next few slides I will show you exactly what I mean by elevating your legs the proper way so the correct way to elevate your leg is not just putting it on a foot wrist but to make sure that the foot is higher than the hip um, the higher the better of course because that'll help with circulation decrease the pain and swelling so after knee surgery do not replace any pillow under your knee that will cause a flexion because this will cause a permanent flexion contracture that will prevent you from fully straightening your knee so it's okay to put the pillow under the entire leg just as long as, it, as it's kept straight so the picture to your right is not recommended and we need we would like for you to keep your leg as straight as possible whenever you're sitting or lying down or sitting on a couch okay so this is the um, frugal way um, an effective way to uh, make your own pillow wedge what you do is you gather three pillows and you buy large safety pins if you don't have them and you pin them all together so that the pillows don't slide around when your leg is up so as you can see the uh, her leg is straight and it's elevated it's above her hip level that's what I forgot to mention earlier is your leg needs to be above hip level um, to be considered as elevating your leg now if it's um, more swollen and it's not going down then you you can elevate your leg higher than your hip and make sure that it aligns with your heart level or it's uh, no, toes to your nose but again just as long as your leg is elevated and it's higher than your hip that is sufficient I have given you the ice pack recipe that you can make your own at home um, I, f I have found that th the ice pack recipe works a lot better or it stays a lot colder than just buying the gel so but if you have an overabundance of gel packs that's iced or cold then 
for, go ahead and use those. Um, you don't have to make uh, the ice pack yourselves. And if you are going to be making your own ice pack, make sure you use um, food coloring to kind of let you know whether it's leaking or not. Don't use red. You don't want to be confused between the ice pack draining or leaking or you draining from your incision site. So any other color but red. Okay, so if you don't want to spend $90 to get the pillow wedge, there are different options. You can go to Costco online or Bed Bath & Beyond. They're all online and they're about $35 to $45. And of course, with Bed Bath & Beyond, you get the never ending or never expiring coupon. So those are the different alternatives. Um, some patients have found it cheaper at maybe TJ Maxx or Marshalls, but that's if you get lucky. Um, or you can go to the Bed Bath & Beyond and they do have the pillow wedge, but they are also $90. But again, you still get the uh, non-expiring coupons. You don't have to buy these pillow wedges, but if you want to purchase your own, you can definitely use these. And even after your surgery, you can still use them. So constipation is very common and everyone, or at least 90% of our patients will get constipation because if you are taking narcotics and now that you're not moving as much, it slows everything down. So a lot of the bowel medications that are commonly used are available for you to uh, purchase over the counter. You don't need prescription. So when you are discharged, you are um, discharged with uh, two of the bowel medications. So it's included with your pain medications that you're gonna go home with. One of them is called Ducaset Sodium or Colace. That's a stool softener. And the other is Senna or Senalax. That's a laxative. So it is very important for you to take both of those at once as soon as you start taking any narcotics such as oxycodone or Norco or Percocet because you don't want to wait just like with pain you don't want to wait until you haven't got have not gone to the bathroom for five days before you start taking them if you are a person that goes every day then you you should use this if you haven't gone the second day and also, if you notice that even after taking both of them and you haven't gone second day, please give me a call and I can guide you on how to, uh, what else to use, what the next steps are about uh, to do with bowel medications. Now with the Senalox, it causes um, cramping pain. So the other alternative is Miralax. It's polyethylene glycol. This can be purchased at any pharmacy. So you can either buy the brand name Miralax or the generic polyethylene glycol. And they're the same, as you know, it's just brand. Um, it's, it's just powder that you can mix with water. It's easy to swallow, not like Metamucil. So you could take this and patients have said that it is not as uncomfortable as the Senna. It does not make them feel uncomfortable. So that is another option for you that, to use if in case the Senna lacks is not helping. 